In this part of video, we'll talk about how to do the graph interpretation and draw the conclusion from it. It is one of the hardest, toughest part of your physics IA. The easiest part is actually plotting the graph. You just have to make sure that you must have included the error bar for both x-axis and y-axis. There are times where maybe the error bar is just too small to be seen because of the absolute uncertainty is relatively too small. So you have to mention this specifically. So don't just skip it. You have to really uh, mention this in your passage. And also, if you could, show the numbers to explain. So maybe saying that the range that you are doing of the data maybe is like 1000, but then the uncertainty of y uh, is around maybe 0 0.1 so there's no way that you can show it uh, in the graph uh, in a visible way next when you draw a graph there could be mainly two types of graphs one is linearized graph so that is to say uh, you successfully find out the framework equation and you find a way to linearize the equation itself so like the previous video I said in the process data table you should have prepared those values and so you can just plot it out all right so this should be the most straightforward way for example if you already find out uh, the y is proportional to 1 over x then you can simply of course um, present the data the values of the data in the process data table and then you plot y against 1 over x and probably you get a straight line hopefully so this will be the most straightforward way to do and in that case you should also be able to find out the mass mean line as well okay mass mean line is only available when you linearize the graph or the relationship in itself is linear other than that uh, when you draw the mass mean line you should make sure the lines will pass through all the data points with its error bar some people uh, may not understand correctly and think that oh when I draw the mass mean line I just have to locate the two points so I will draw this point and this point just draw a line and then this point and this point just draw a line uh, this is a simplified way to do it but then when you draw this you should actually pay attention to whether those error bar in between them whether or not it pass through them as well so if if it doesn't then maybe you should adjust the point a bit higher or lower to make sure that the line mass mean line still pass through all the error bars of the other data points to validate the mass mean line itself so don't be simple minded and change and just simply pick the four coordinate and find it out in a case if you really cannot linearize the equation and plot the graph um, to be honest it is still fine to plot the independent variable against the dependent variable it may just be hard later on uh, when you try to analyze the validity of your graph later on uh, if you don't know how to linearize it you can try your luck by maybe um, finding out the value and plotting log of your independent variable against log function of the dependent variable so if the true relationship of the things that you are studying is in power equation that is y equal to a x to the power of b then uh, you should be able to find a linear line however this may not be always a case right then uh, it won't work in case you have different error bars that means different absolute uncertainties for each data point you can refer to this video and learn how to plot the graph on the Google Sheet. Of course, you can use other software like uh, Excel or even Vernier Logger Pro. Uh, this is just a link that I'll put in the description. You can find the other software on YouTube easily as well. Interpretation of the graph is the hardest part here. An idea related to TOK is that science is actually not completely objective maybe in primary or secondary junior secondary uh, you will feel that oh science is really good because it's very objective however in a case where may, maybe when you're interpreting the graph 
or interpreting the data, uh, you could have different way. So just like art, when you look at a certain painting, you can have different feeling. Here, of course, is not directly relying on feeling. Uh, however, there could be more than one explanation, and it really depends on whether you have justification for your argument. So there is no standard method here. Before you draw your line of best fit, uh, you may find out that there might be some anomalies, and it is actually fine to have that in your physics IA. However, if you have that, and if you want to declare there is anomaly, then you should have a proper explanation for it. As for the quantity, I would say uh, if you have one out of seven data sets, it is acceptable. And if you have two out of ten data sets, it is okay. But if you have more than that, I guess you may want to revisit your methodology or revisit at least that particular data point. And then uh, hopefully maybe you can try to redo and repeat more trials on that point and see whether you can find something uh, different. After you get all the error bars and data point ready, then you can decide what kind of line of best fit you can put to represent the trend. Uh, there could be more than one possibility that, for example, in this case, you can actually fit a straight line, of course. At the same time, you could also fit a curve, actually, right? which may be quadratic equation, or it could be exponential function, etc. Uh, no matter how many you can do, at the end you should only choose one of them. And in order to choose, to choose one of them, you have to make argument to see, oh, how come I will choose the, uh, for example, the exponential one, the, the blue one here, rather than the straight line. So maybe that's something to do with the framework that you derived earlier or it could be related to the literature result. Maybe you say, oh, this match with other people's research, while uh, the linear was not actually fine in anyone's research. The other way of making argument could be try to extrapolate the trend. So, and then you can see whether there's any unreasonable result. For example, uh, let's say in this research question, uh, I'm trying to find refractive index, let's just say then maybe if you are using a linear relationship then it may not make sense because um, maybe when you try to draw a line like this like keep extending it or if you keep extending that uh, the refractive index can go up to like 5 or 6 and that doesn't make sense I mean no matter what material you do probably it shouldn't exceed 2 point something or 3 point something so this is a way to extract extrapolate to the extreme point uh, it can help you to identify whether a certain mathematical model would be suitable. So after the arguments that you made earlier, then in the conclusion session, you should be able to state clearly uh, what kind of mathematical model would be the best for describing the relationship of IV and DV that you are studying. So. Do not stop at just saying, oh, uh, when this increase, the other one decrease, right? This one would not get you anywhere, or right? it's probably just level two or three if you just say it this way. You really have to describe it by using the terminology in maths that is probably linear, proportional, exponential, inverse, inverse square, etc. There is something that I would like to remind you that is uh, do not get confused with linear and proportional. Actually, I mentioned in other videos as well, but let me just reiterate once again quickly. Linear, the equation is y equal to kx plus c, while for proportional, it is y equal to kx. So proportional actually pass through the origin. While for inverse function, sometimes it gets confused with lean, uh, negative linear. So for inverse, it will be y equal to k over x, while for negative linear, it could be y equals to negative kx plus c. Uh, of course, k will be a positive in uh, number here. In terms of the shape, uh, both actually both inverse and negative linear, uh, they will have a relationship like uh, when y increase, x will decrease. But then in terms of the shape, of the graph, 
inverse is more like a curve like this, while for uh, negative linear line might be something like this, right? It's a straight line. So, um, so that's why you see like uh, if you just say or oh, when y increase x decrease, that would not be enough. You really need to use a clear mathematical model, and that is a function to show the relationship between the independent variable and dependent variable. And here is something more you can include in the conclusion. Some people may like to include it in the evaluation instead, uh, but I would say if you include in the conclusion, that's actually fine as well. If you have a linear linearized graph, uh, you could actually discuss the physical meaning of the slope because uh, think about you, you should have the mass mean line, right? So mass mean line probably something like this. And then there should be two slope that you find and you should be able to find uncertainty by using the half range method. If the slope has a physical meaning, then that means this uncertainty has a physical meaning too. So maybe representing a certain physical quantities uncertainty. So try to find it out. You may find useful later on when you do the evaluation um, for comparing with the literature. Same applies to the intercept. So for either x or y intercept, uh, their uncertainty may be meaningful. So let's say uh, if I stick to this graph, then obviously the x intercept will be here and here. So you want to find this as the uncertainty. Or if you extend the line like this, well, this is a terrible one. Right? Extend the line like this, then you could find this is a y intercept, this is a y intercept, so this is the uncertainty if you divide by 2 for the y intercept. And if again, if these things represent a certain meaning in physics, then surely you should point it out and maybe discuss here or later. The other thing that you can do with the linearized graph is you can also check its origin. And that is to say, uh, if you expect the line of best fit to be proportional or if you can simply just look at the physics and see uh, when this is zero uh, whether or not the other one will also be zero if it is log logically true then you may want to check whether your data will cover the origin so that is to check whether the mass mean line so for example uh, if the line is something like this and something like this then it is fine because this is the area where you cover so the origin is within the area or uh, if you think about it if this get till then it doesn't cover the origin then in this case uh, it will show maybe there is a systematic error you should think about later on two more common mistakes that i would like to remind you that i find quite a lot in the conclusion section that is, uh, some people would say, oh, I prove something. So no matter how nice the trend that you find, uh, how well it matches with the literature, you should not say proof. And that's something related to TOK as well. Um, in science, you never prove anything because what you do in experiment is to provide evidence to support a certain theory or a principle or a scientific model so you can say uh, words like you verify something you validate something or you uh, have something that strongly suggests the model is correct those would be the words that you could use um, it's always easy to disprove something so that's why proof is uh, it's like a word that we we don't want even want to touch we don't have the confidence to say we prove something because you never know maybe a thousand years later like uh, Newton's law that you'll find out oh actually there's some flaw so uh, try to avoid using this word the next thing is um, some people I don't know why they would just like claim the random error is rather uh, large or small by your own feeling so you kind of uh, do it in a way that oh when I see the error bar is big then I think it is big so then I should just say large so this is not actually a way to do it in a scientific way. The scientific way to do it is whether or not you can fit different mathematical models. So just like what I showed you earlier, if you have the error bar that is so huge, 
that you can fit a linear line and then maybe you can fit a curve to a different mathematical model then quite likely uh, your random error is large because think about this if your error if your random error is small that is uh, maybe it is so 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 tiny then the only way to do is probably really a straight line right there's no way you can fit a curve I don't think you can you can think of a curve to fit I mean yeah really there's no way so uh, that's why we always want to reduce the error by itself if possible and that could be rich of course other than the instrument itself uh, maybe your methodology uh, on how to set the control variable or how to uh, collect the data it will be important as well so remember whenever you claim um, whether the random error is large or not you have to base on the evidence